Hey, and welcome to a new video. Today, I will explain my workflow for CO2 wood engraving. By the end, you should be able to create amazing images on wood, so stay tuned. First, we need to understand the important parts of our laser concerning image engraving. A CO2 laser typically has three mirrors. They must be perfectly aligned so that the laser beam has the same power at every point on your work area. Achieving this means creating a perfect round circle at the same position on all four corners of your workspace. There's no such thing as nearly perfect. It must be perfect at all corners for optimal results. Before starting any significant engraving, I usually test my alignment again with a piece of painter's tape. Simply place it over your mirror, move it to the nearest position, hit the pulse button, then move it to the furthest position, and hit pulse again. If it looks good, you're ready to go. For the third mirror, the one above the lens, place some tape underneath the nozzle and press it to create a mark. Hit pulse and ensure the dot does not touch any edge of the nozzle or have any irregular shape. Great! Now that we've finished the alignment, let's move on to cleaning the mirrors and lenses. Remove the top screw holding down your mirror and gently take it out of its holder. The best way to clean it is with a microfiber cloth and some isopropyl alcohol. Give it a gentle rub and ensure there's no residue left. Now we can put the mirror back in its holder and tighten the screw again. Remove your air assist Unscrew the laser nozzle and take out the lens. I use compound lenses, so don't be confused if you see two lenses in my nozzle. I highly recommend using a compound lens, as it improved my quality from 212 to 318 dpi for wood engravings, resulting in better darks and more detail. As with the mirror, clean the lenses using the microfiber cloth and isopropyl alcohol. Ensure the concave side is facing up and the hollow side is directed towards the material. For compound lenses, this is true for both. Usually, you have a lighter lens and a darker lens in a compound setup. The lighter lens goes in first, it has a longer focal length and is made from CVD material. I use a plastic ring in between to prevent direct contact. Next, we add the darker lens on top, which usually has a shorter focal length and is made of PVD. So, the beam hits the mirror first, then the dark lens, then the light one, and finally the material. After cleaning the lenses and putting them back in the nozzle, tighten the screw gently. Don't be too aggressive, as this could break the lens. If it's not tight enough, the lens will wobble while engraving. Reattach the nozzle and ensure the air assist is working properly. Now that we've completed the cleaning, we need a piece of scrap wood. Place something under one side to create a slight ramp. Next, we'll draw a straight line in light burn. Set it to a high speed and low power to ensure we're not cutting through the wood. We just want to mark it. Move your laser head above the material. If everything is set correctly, the line should start wide, get smaller, and then widen again. If not, increase the angle of your ramp. As you can see, there's now a very small spot on the line. Let me adjust the other side of the wood slightly, so the small spot gets a bit longer, allowing me to pinpoint the best distance more accurately. Now, we will use digital calipers to measure the distance between the head and the material at the smallest spot. Move the laser head directly above the smallest spot. You only need to do this ramp test once per material not for every image. Take your time measuring. Don't bend the wood or the head while you measure. 
it needs to be as exact as possible. Fix the distance on your calipers and feel good. You're one big step closer. We can now remove the scrap piece and add a larger one because we're going to determine our DPI value. As you all know, your laser creates a round shape with a specific diameter. We need to confirm that the laser dot size matches the size of the dots in our image, known as DPI. Let me show you the easiest way to do this using ImageDasher.com in just a few seconds, and it's completely free. Upload your image. Since we want to engrave, choose Grayscale. Now we can choose the size of our engraving. I want to engrave it at a width of 250 millimeters, and the height will calculate automatically. You might not know your DPI yet, so I recommend using something like 254 or 318 for now. Next, click on Material and choose the Kaja Wood algorithm. For me, this is the best choice for plywood. For portraits, I always untick the Sharpen and Denoise options in the one-touch function. As you can see, it looks unbelievably better with the one touch applied. However, since CO2 lasers don't handle really dark spots well, I will use auto adjustment and gamma adjustment to fix this issue. Auto adjustment only corrects slight contrast issues, while gamma will make the image lighter. Nice, that's exactly what we're looking for. Click the download button and save your file as PNG. More importantly, click on DPI test. Choose a highly detailed area with a lot of contrast, such as the eyes, lips, or hair. In this case, I'll use the eye, nose, and eyebrow. Tick the DPI values you want to test. I recommend starting from 169 to 212 if you've never done one and are using a normal lens. If you're using a compound lens, start from 254 and go up to 423. This will download a zip file containing the DPI test files. After we've created the DPI test files, place the larger scrap material inside the machine. I use magnets to hold my wood completely flat. It must be entirely flat, otherwise the engraving won't have the same power and detail throughout. By completely flat, I mean a maximum difference of 0.2 mm for compound lenses. Also, ensure you measure the distance in all corners and the center to guarantee a perfectly flat material. <laughs> now we can finally run the DPI files in Lightburn. Import the files and arrange them next to each other. Open the image settings and make sure that pass-through is activated. If it's not, it definitely won't work. As you can see, I have five images instead of four because I engraved the 318 DPI a second time. I got the most details with 318, but it was slightly overburned, so I did it again with less power. Just a note to avoid confusion. You need to choose the DPI with the most details, the fewest visible dots, and no deep burn areas. Congratulations! Now we're ready to engrave the complete image. We will import our 318 DPI image of the girl into Lightburn. I use 200 millimeters per second on my 80 watt CO2 laser with a minimum power of 11% and a maximum of 18%. Make sure the scan angle is always against the wood grain. This is very important, so I'll set it to zero. Pass through is crucial. Ensure it's green and activated. If not, everything we did before was for nothing. Also, don't be confused if it looks more pixelated on your screen. Zooming in or out will change the appearance. This is just a display issue since your monitor can't show many small dots at once. Great, now hit start and watch the magic happen. As usual, I did not treat the wood in any way. No soda, no borax, no sanding. It's just plain birch plywood. At the end, I use a brush to remove any residue from the final product. I love how it turned out. It's absolutely perfect. I hope this video helps you create some awesome wood pieces too. 
please leave a like, subscribe to our channel and have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching and goodbye.